So you think you're good at shooting. Well, so did I before I shot my first match. Now, when I first got into shooting, it was mostly for defensive purposes. I started concealed carrying and I quickly kind of plateaued with my skill level. I became the best shooter I knew, kind of felt like I got as good as I thought I could be. And then, uh, thanks to a good buddy of mine, I shot my first match and I very quickly realized that there is a whole new world of shooting performance. And so what we wanted to do today is just talk about a couple of reasons why we think you should shoot your first match. We'd like to thank Blue Alpha for sponsoring this channel. We've been running Blue Alpha products for a long, long time, so we could not be more thrilled to have them as a sponsor of the channel. If you guys are looking for sick belts and a lot of other nylon products made right here in the USA, down in Georgia, uh, go ahead and check them out at BlueAlphaBelts.com. There's a link in the description below that you can use that helps us out quite a bit allows us to continue making awesome videos just like this. Uh, we also would like to thank our ammo sponsor, Jello Shots Ammo. We've known Angelo a long time and we just absolutely love what he's doing and those guys down in Arizona. So go ahead and give them some love and go ahead and check them out at jelloshotsammo.com. So big thanks to our sponsors, back to the video. So the first reason is it allows you to test the fundamentals of your shooting and movement skills under some form of pressure. And it's kind of a proof of what, of whether or not what you're doing and practicing on the range on your own time is actually working under some form of pressure. It's a super underrated part of competition shooting, uh, the amount of pressure and stress that you do experience when you go to shoot a stage or just shoot an entire match in general. If you're unfamiliar with how a match works, typically you have uh, a few squads uh, of shooters, a squad consisting of you know eight to 12 shooters Shooters, and when it's your turn to shoot, everyone in the squad is watching you, the range officer is watching you, you're thinking about a lot of different things and it really does put you under a lot of stress and pressure. And so being able to actually uh, prove, uh, kind of proof what you're doing on your own time and practicing in dry fire and live fire uh, to see if those things actually work and you can perform uh, under that kind of pressure is super valuable, I think. Yeah, I, I almost equate it to like a cold start, right? I, yeah. I think a lot of people are pretty, um, pretty stoked on cold starts because it is a measure of what you can do at any given time, just like pull out your gun and what can you do kind of on demand. Um, and stages are very much like that. It gives you a complex problem to solve and you get one shot at it. And you, if you mess up um, or whatever, if you fail to plan well, um, you don't get any do-overs. Like you've just got to put up what you can do right there. And so if you're using matches to pressure test what you're practicing, um, you can get a lot of information back from that, especially if you shoot by yourself uh, or don't have a buddy to shoot with um, or anybody who's better than you. Um, you're gonna be able to be like, okay, here's where I'm stacking up and maybe I performed well, maybe I performed poorly, um, but either way, it's gonna kind of let you start measuring um, your progress really. Yeah. And it's a consistency thing too, right? When you go to shoot a match, typically you're gonna have at least four to eight stages, four to six, four to eight stages, and you can't fake that, right? So how you consistently perform on demand, cold, uh, for each of those stages across the entire match is really uh, pretty telling as far as where you're at as a shooter. All right, so the second reason that you should shoot a match is uh, kind of related to the first reason, it's going to expose you to shooters who are much better than you, and it's actually going to allow your, you to compare yourself and your performance to some of the best shooters or even the best shooters in the world, depending on what match you shoot. Um, and so one thing that, about USPSA specifically that we shoot is it's an amateur sport, right? And so uh, as long as you can uh, get a slot in a match and um, you know pay the, pay the fee, the match fee, and show up, uh, you are probably going to end up competing against national champions and world champions. So if you go shoot an area match or nationals or something like that, like those heavy hitter guys are going to be there. And once you're done with a match or even as you shoot it, you're going to be able to go into practice score, which is, uh, you know, the, the scoring system that USPSA uses and actually compare your times, your hits and uh, even comparing stage videos. So if you video your stage and let's say Christian Seiler videos his stages, which he tends to do, um, I can actually overlay my videos on his and, and, and watch us both shoot the stage differently, even if I wasn't shooting with him, and get into like Practice Score Competitor, right, the app, and actually start, you know, where did, where did I lose, you know, eight seconds to Christian Seiler, right? Which is insane if you think about it, because yeah. essentially, you're getting, it's almost like going to the range and shooting with these guys, mm -hmm. right? 
Um, and man, there's just so many lessons to be learned there. Yeah, and I think no matter what discipline it is that you're doing, whether it's you know jujitsu, uh, you know racing cars, shooting guns, being able to look at the best of the best and being able to essentially want you know, you want to emulate what they're doing. You want to watch what they're doing. You want to uh, hone in on what it is they're doing and figure out how to do those things. Uh, and I think that's super important. And so being able to do that so easily with uh, shooting, you know, specifically USPSA, uh, man, I, I, I don't know a lot of other things that are as easy and as, as accessible to do that with. Yeah, and don't be, um, don't be intimidated by shooting against those guys because even though, like you were saying, there is a lot of pressure on you to perform, uh, at the same time, like, no offense, but like those guys don't care how you do, right? So right. like, don't be intimidated by the good shooters who are, who are going to be there. Just look at how they're performing and use it as, um, as learning material, right? Mm -hmm. and, and essentially take homework notes and be like, okay, he's shooting it this way, he's super, super good. How do I emulate what he's doing to get similar results? All right, guys, the third reason why we think you should shoot a match is because competition breeds greatness. So I grew up with a few siblings, a few brothers, and if you're anything like me, we were all super competitive, right? Uh, I also had a few friends growing up that I was super competitive with. I think with specifically competition shooting, whether you're shooting by yourself or even better yet, shooting with your buddies, uh, being able to kind of play off of each other and learn from each other's uh, strengths and weaknesses, uh, as well as going and shooting matches with you know GMs and M's and watching what they're doing, uh, it naturally just breeds that competitive spirit in you. And I think that can, that can really take you to the next level. Yeah, I mean, I would say for me, even kind of coming up in USPSA, and I mean, I still have so much work to do, but I would pick out shooters who I was impressed with and make it my goal to like finish within a certain percentage of them. Mm -hmm. um, like at first, like it, it wasn't even possible to think about beating them, but it was just like, oh man, like I want to do like, almost as good as him. Maybe I want to do 75% as good as this shooter or something like that. And another cool thing about practice score is you actually get to see where the rankings are and how well you shot compared to anybody else. Um, and so I would set those goals for myself and kind of chase those guys. And it was pretty cool to see after a while, it was like, hey, I'm actually starting to come in right around the same spot as that guy. And mm -hmm. then maybe, you know, one of these days I, I beat him at a match or then he's beating me. Um, and I think you and I have kind of experienced that somewhat shooting, shooting matches around here. A lot, yeah. Um, I think when I showed up, you were pretty consistently beating me uh, when I moved up here. And then, you know, we started trading off and now we trade off pretty well. And then like at majors, you tend to do better than me, right? Like it's just, it's one of those things where I look at, it, I'm like, well, I shoot with you a lot, right? And so what's the difference between our practice sessions where we're just trading back and forth mm -hmm. to shooting a major match, 12 stages, um, you know? And, and so what's cool about that for me is that like, I know how you shoot, I know how we practice. And uh, essentially, I think I can roadmap a way to better performance at matches because I'm competing with, against you and then I'm also practicing uh, you know, with a good shooter as well. Mm -hmm. So, um, man, there's just, there's just so much to unpack there. Um, and I think this is one of those things that you almost have to experience for yourself. Mm -hmm. um, but once you do, it's like, oh yeah, this is, this is great, right? Yep. You're just pushing each other to be better. Yep, and I think surrounding yourself with people that want to get better, um, or even just people that are just straight up better than you is, is so important for your growth, uh, not only as a shooter, but also just as a human. Uh, and so I know that, yeah, we've experienced that quite a bit, and it's so interesting to see both of us at very similar levels of skill and performance uh, have different strengths and weaknesses that we can evaluate and assess for each other in training and at matches and be able to kind of work on those things uh, in that way. I would say too, um, as a last kind of aside on this, is if you do sign up for a match, try to squad with like master class and uh, grandmaster shooters um, if there's any slots available in their squad. Um, because being able to watch some, somebody do something in person, um, I mean, that's, you've got a front row seat to kind of, you know, the next level of performance. So anytime you get the opportunity to do that, do that versus always just squatting with like your buddies who are all in C class. With you. Or even better yet, bring your buddies with you so you can all watch them and kind of assess that way. All right, the fourth reason why we think it's important that you guys should start shooting matches is it allows you to shake out your gear. Now, uh, when I think of like gear shakedowns, I'm generally thinking of like tactical loadouts, mm -hmm. right? And people doing like CrossFit in body armor type thing. Um, but at the same time, like what I'm asking my gun to do and my uh, belt setup to do and all the gear that I'm using for a match, 
is I'm asking for it to perform uh, to a certain level where it's not going to hold me back at all. Um, and so if you've ever been shooting a drill, maybe you're just recording it for the camera, maybe you're doing it for somebody else, and you had some sort of gear malfunction or uh, firearm malfunction, it's, you know, it's devastating because you're like, oh man, I was doing so well. And then all of a sudden, you know, it's, it's, all, it's all in the trash. The right? framing was just right. <laughs> right, exactly. Uh, so, I mean, what, what you're looking for at a match is I've got to have my gear and I've got to have my gun and my ammo, all of that stuff squared away so that I can shoot um, you know, 30, you know, maybe 15 to 30 rounds at a time, six to eight different times across the day, and for us to not have any issues with it at all. Um, and so I know my belt setup for my first USPSA match looks way different than my setup We're gonna now. pull up a picture of it right here. Yeah, so big old padded HSGI In belt. In all its glory. Safari Land uh, <laughs> holster. Um, I think I was running a thigh strap. Um, there's just a bunch of stuff, and it, that setup did work okay. Um, but my setup now, much more streamlined, much more quick, um, and just it's, it's kind of a, a better solution all around. So getting exposed to how does my gear actually work for me when I'm running around doing dynamic things and when I need it to work every single time uh, with no issues for an entire day of shooting, um, that is a pretty good way to uh, kind of shake that out. If that happens at the range, generally I'm not as concerned about it. I'm like, right. oh, my, mag, off. my yep. mag pouch fell off and I just walk back to the truck and I just reattach and I keep going yep. and there's not really any consequence to it. But if that's happening at a match, that can be, I mean, pretty devastating. That could pretty much tank your, tank your state. Yeah. And the thing is like you're invested financially and uh, you know, intellectually into that match, right? Or that stage, right? You've paid money to you know, register for the match. You've already shot ammo, so you spent money on ammo. You've spent money on get, you know, the gas to get to the match. And on top of that, like you're shooting in front of your buddies or in front of the whole people. Like you're very, there's a lot at stake, so to speak, right? Uh, you go to shoot a match, it could cost you anywhere from 50 to 100 bucks, right? And so if you have a malfunction on that stage, you're so, heavily invested into that match and that stage that it's super frustrating. And whenever it happens, you wanna make sure it never happens again. I'm thankful that I you know, maintenance my gear enough to where I don't really have malfunctions, but I have had a few and whatever it is they were, whether it was magazine related or gun related or dot related or whatever, I made sure to that that never happens ever again because uh, yeah, aside from all of that, it tanks your score, right? You have a malfunction on a stage, cost you two to four seconds. I mean, you're out You're out of the, the game at that point. Maybe not for the whole match, but for that stage specifically. And the fact of the matter is, guys, when you compare all this to like concealed carry and EDC, um, all of those things that go into a match and all the investment is nothing compared to your own life. So it's. I think it's a pretty uh, accurate parallel. Yeah, for sure. And I, I think too, when, again, kind of going back to that gear shakeout being more of a tactical thing, um, like I need my gun, I want my gun to run 100% reliably with as little maintenance as possible, mm -hmm. right? Um, and if you think about the gun that you're going to carry with you every day, uh, you kind of want the same thing, right? That gun is gonna live in a holster, maybe you don't shoot it all that much, which you should, uh, but maybe you don't shoot it all that much, maybe it's just kind of, you know, the gun that lives in the holster, goes from your holster to your nightstand, back to your holster, whatever. Um, the day you need that and you pull that gun out, it's got to work for you um, through however much ammunition you're carrying on you, you want it to be able to feed reliably, function reliably, um, and all of that stuff, right? And mm -hmm. so, um, we're both big advocates of shooting your carry guns. Um, I personally compete with my uh, match gun, right? And so having it work for me over a major match of 12, 15, 20 stages, something like that, man, that gives me so much confidence when I go and holster that thing up and uh, actually carry that gun. Um, because that is that is kind of the ultimate reason that we're carrying guns to begin with. Um, and so, man, like what a good way to actually test uh, what you've got. Yeah, and I don't mean to beat a dead horse here, but another thing to keep in mind is, you know, you're dropping magazines on the ground, right? These ranges are dirt, sand, grass, everything in between. So it actually is, like if you talk about a durability test or torture test, it actually is a very accurate representation of what kind of durability you may need and be looking for in a carry gun or uh, training gun. Another reason why you should shoot a match is because a lot of the clubs near you that host USPSA matches have bays 
that allow you to do your own kind of performance style training, dynamic uh, style training, because a lot of those ranges that have memberships, um, in order to accommodate a USPSA match or a USPSA stage, uh, they have to have some sort of bay where you can do a lot of movement. And a lot of those uh, uh, ranges allow you to do those things if you have a membership there. So if you're if you're someone that's looking for a range, maybe you're stuck at an indoor range with a single lane and you're looking to kind of get out and expand your training capability, um, go shoot a match and I can guarantee you it will open up a whole new world of ranges that will allow you to do that. And at the end of the day guys, this is fun. I know that shooting USPSA matches specifically are some of the best days on the range for me. It's some of the most fun I ever have. And I think a lot of people uh, take this stuff uh, really, really serious and they just never have any fun. And you know, I get it, it's serious stuff, but if you're not having fun, you might as well just go home. So guys, that is a few reasons why we think you should go shoot your first match and why you should just shoot competition in general. Um, stay tuned for a lot more videos like this coming in the future. If you guys have any questions or comments about shooting USPSA matches or any matches in general, go ahead and drop them in the comments below. As always, keep practicing and shooting. We'll see you on the range. Nailed it. Boom! Nailed it. Done.